I get tagged in hamster TikTok videos just about every single day, with the majority of them being videos that I just necessarily didn't want to see because it just gets tiring seeing, and I know everybody is tagging me with good intentions, but I can't help everybody, but the most recent video that I was tagged in is a video that I am going to talk about um, in this video in a little bit, but it's going to be a little bit of a different video because I'm not just going to be reacting to this video and then telling this person like what they need to do and what they're doing wrong. I'm pretty sure like majority of the people watching this video already know all of the wrongs that is going on in this TikTok video and the TikTok did get a lot of views. So obviously there were a lot of people already giving them advice and things that I would say. So it's not really necessary for me to be like, hey, this is what you need to do because people have already told them the proper care and it's up to them to then go and change using that advice. Um, so instead, I created a PowerPoint presentation for you guys that I'm going to make you sit through and listen. Well, technically you can click off the video if you don't want to listen, but I would hope that you stay and listen because I spend a lot of time making this. All right, so the original TikTok video starts off with two siblings who go out and they decide that they are going to be buying a hamster without their parents' knowledge. You guys probably already know how I feel about this. Please don't ever do this. Don't just go out and say, hey, I want this pet, but I don't own the house that I'm living in, but I'm going to bring it home anyways. Terrible, terrible idea. Always check with whoever's house you are living in first. So the enclosure, it appears that they chose was a small critter keeper along with a 4.5 inch silent spinner wheel. The hamster that they picked out is a juvenile Syrian hamster. It doesn't look to be more than eight weeks of age, so it is still small. But keep in mind, this is still a baby hamster, and the wheel is still not large enough for them. All right, so then Muffin, the hamster, gets a new cage. Um, this is possibly because of some feedback from viewers from the first video. Um, so then they went out and decided to get a new enclosure. Unfortunately, it still was a critter keeper. Um, yeah, here is the hamster next to the 4.5 inch silent spinner wheel. Like I said previously, this is a juvenile Syrian hamster, so they're still a baby. But can we can we just take a comparison of the size of the hamster next to the size of the wheel? Can anybody tell me, you know, why? why that's not gonna work. <laughs> All right. And then based on some Googling, I found that this is probably the largest critter keeper that they sell. Um, and it is 15 inches by nine inches, which gives us a total of 135 square inches of floor space. Next, next slide. Um, so here is my feet compared to the enclosure. I have average sized women's feet, which is an 8.5. So that's all you should really need to see to, yeah. Um, and this was the most recent update. Yeah, not exactly the update everyone was hoping for. Um, it seems like they possibly are just making a joke out of the entire situation. Now we get to the point of my presentation. Who is to blame in this situation? Now, first off, the owner. Now, the owner is not completely to blame but they still share some of it because number one, they were in charge of researching. You are the one responsible for bringing home a living being. Therefore, it's your job to research the care of the animal that you choose to bring home. Pets are a luxury. Nobody is forcing you to go out and get a pet. It is completely your choice to own one. When you're committing to bringing a pet home, you are agreeing to ensure that they will be free from hunger and thirst, free from discomfort, free from pain, injury, and disease, free from fear and distress, and free to express normal behaviors. 
these boxes are not all checked off when it comes to Muffin's care. Muffin is not free from discomfort due to the small sized wheel. Anytime that they try to use that wheel, which they are going to try to use that wheel because the enclosure is so small and they have such a need to explore and exercise, they are going to force themselves to use that wheel because that's the only thing that they can do in there, um, which is going to cause them discomfort because they are going to be arching their back. And number two, Muffin is not free to express normal behaviors that a hamster would perform, burrowing, foraging, being able to explore, being able to properly run, do anything that a hamster is supposed to do. Now, if you feel bad when you see something like this, you should feel the same way when you see something like this because these two images are not any different from one another. They both are two animals that are not getting the proper care they need. They do not have the enrichment and the stimulation to thrive and be happy. Now, who else is to blame? Well, the brands. They also share some of the blame because if these products weren't created and sold, they wouldn't be able to be used. Now, while many would assume that the critter keeper is just intended for transporting and traveling with a hamster, say to the vet or taking them home, this is the description of their product. The keepers may be used as space-saving aquariums or insect havens, but are also ideal for use as critter totes, terrariums, or nurseries. Rectangular critter keepers have self-locking lids with hinge viewer, feeder windows, and the mini small and medium sizes have carry handles for easy transport. Critter keepers have well-ventilated lids in assorted colors. Nowhere do they say that this is not intended for full-time use. Um, so that can leave somebody thinking that it's okay to put something small inside of it to live in. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, well, it's just common sense that you don't make an animal live there full-time, but is it common sense? There's a reason that coffee companies have to put caution, hot coffee. Now, there is no reason for KT to sell a wheel this small. They list the 4.5 inch wheel as being made for dwarf hamsters and mice, but a dwarf hamster on average is three inches long and same goes for a mouse and that's not including the length of their tail. This size does not allow for a straight back when running. I actually have one of these wheels because I had gotten it when I adopted one of my past hamsters and this was the wheel they were forced to run in. Um, this is a size comparison. <laughs> this thing is so tiny. Now, who else is to blame? Well, it's pet stores because most can agree that a place who dedicates themselves to selling live animals should be aware of the proper care and not sell dangerous products. People assume when they walk into a pet store that that is a place that they can trust because, well, they're selling pets, so they should know the care that pets need, right? Wrong. The employees. Keep in mind that working in a pet store often is an entry-level job. This means that you don't need any prior experience or schooling to work there. So basically what this means is anybody that is hired is going to be trained and educated based on what the company believes is correct. Um, and this often means outdated information or whatever they have written in their care pamphlets. Now, of course, there are going to be some amazing pet store employees out there who go out of their way to research every single pet that they sell in their store in order to make sure that all of these pets are going to be going home with the proper care. And if you're one of those pet store employees, shout out to you because you are doing the Lord's work. But now when the store sells the products an employee warns against, it can cause confusion and mistrust because why would your store sell it if you didn't want me to buy it? Now, Business owners want the most profit because if their store is not making profit, their store is not going to be lasting very long. Um, now, all pet stores will be different, but there are many who will require their employees to try and sell as much product from their store as they can, and many are not allowed to deny a sale. 
There are also selfish owners out there, unfortunately. Many people wanting pets do not care or want to consider the needs of said pet that they are getting. And often we'll see that because they are human, that they are some godlike figure, and that because they are at the top of the food chain, that any pet that they bring into their home should just be grateful because they're giving them food and water. So even if an employee goes ahead and explains the needs of a pet that someone is wanting, if they are not allowed to deny sales, an owner can walk in, buy a neglectful sized cage, and any pet they want for it. And that is how the cycle continues. So as you can see here, the first part of the cycle is manufacturers making these products that for some reason they thought should exist. <laughs> And then they sell those to the pet store, which then somebody unknowingly walks into the pet store, decides, hey, I want a hamster. So an employee who was trained under what the company believes gets a hamster, tells them all of the things that they need to buy, including all of the bad things like hamster ball, cotton fluff, small enclosure, the owner goes home, maybe they decide to do research after, or maybe they just come across proper hamster care and they start to learn more and that leads them to feeling extremely confused, angry, and upset because now they just spent all of their hard-earned money on all of these products that could potentially harm their pet. So if brands hadn't created these products, they wouldn't be able to harm hamsters because they just, they wouldn't exist. And if pet stores actually cared about their pets and decided to do a little bit more research and updated their care standards and decided to not order the bad products, it wouldn't really matter if somebody who didn't have a lot of knowledge on hamsters walked in and wanted a hamster because if you only sold good products, those are the only things that the owner would be able to buy. <laughs> are you, are, are, is everyone following along? And if all pet stores were allowed to deny sales, and if all employees were educated on what is a good owner versus a bad owner, a lot less hamsters would be neglected right now. So what can you do about it? Well, the first thing is you can help spread proper care, whether that is doing it through social media, like making YouTube videos, having an Instagram account where you share proper hamster care, having a TikTok where you make hamster care, videos, a Pinterest, any of those types of things where you are sharing hamster care that is good can help because the more people it reaches, the better. Don't forget when you are spreading proper hamster care, please do it with kindness. The more aggressive and mean you are to somebody about their hamster care, the less likely they are going to want to actually go ahead and implement the new care or even try to join the hamster community because the meaner you are, the more negative you make the hamster community look. And the majority of us are not mean and we are very open to anybody who wants to come and learn more about hamsters and improve their care. Now, you can also support good brands. This isn't always possible. I know that there are so many brands out there who only sell like one or two good hamster items that your hamster may like using, but the more small good brands that you support, the better. And last but not least, let brands know you aren't happy with their bad products. Feel free to email them about specific products that they sell and explain why these are unsuitable and provide them with information, links, all of that. You can also contact them on social media because a majority of these brands do have some sort of social media. So feel free to let them know there that you're not happy with some of these bad products that they sell. So thank you so much for watching this video. And if you sat through this entire presentation, you are now my favorite person in the entire world. I love you. <laughs> so I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.